but he doesn't realize that the water is already in front of him. It's just covered by some grass or something. And he just didn't see the water was already there. So this, uh, the soul is covered by this material body. Uh, that is one thing, but that, also, that means that we are, we are covered by illusion. And so much so that we think that this body, this is me. I am this body, I am a man, I am a woman, I am Danish, French, Arabic, uh, Muslim, Christian, all these things. Uh, but actually we are eternal servants of Krishna. And if we want real happiness, eternal happiness, uh, and not just uh, a little bit, intense ecstasy, this is what we are looking for, uh, then we must uh, understand we are servants, we are not the master, we are not the enjoyer. We, are, we can say we are, we are also meant to enjoy, but that enjoyment is for us. Um, we are the secondary enjoyers. We enjoy by serving. And ultimately by serving Krishna, we enjoy. As long as we think, I want to enjoy, <laughs> then we suffer. And when we forget about our own happiness and uh, be concerned about Krishna's happiness, then we become happy. So that is, uh, that is the message of Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Maybe we can have some comments, any questions from anybody? Yes. Um, I was wondering because you talked about um, this, like the verse talked about too much and too little, and you mm -hmm. said that's a very like, um, relevant uh, problem in the modern world, people they call in extremes. Mm -hmm. Also, um, like as devotees, it can be very difficult to find that balance, like in our surrender. Like what one person might do would seem extreme, and what another person might like do would seem like it's it's very relative. So how do we situate ourselves, like in a, in a devotional way? Not yeah. being too extreme and not being too lazy, but engaging sincerely. Mm -hmm. In one sense, the answer is very simple. But at the same time, not so simple, but to, to make it simple, just for the understanding, <laughs> is that we have to uh, surrender to a guru. And uh, he will help us in our spiritual life. He will be able to guide us and see the, our individual case, what we should do, because Krishna gives some, gives some general advice, like here, you should not eat too much, not sleep too little, and so on. So that's individual for everyone. You know, some people need to eat more. People who have a big body, who, who work, uh, on a building site or does something very physically hard. He needs to eat more than a person who studies books or gives lectures or things like that. So, yeah, we, the, the key to find the balance is to, con to uh, consult the spiritual master or the authority. And then you can say, okay, well, I already have a guru, you can say. But your guru may not be here, <laughs> so then you can then you can just space out. <laughs> but uh, but then you have to always be under authority. That's the point. We are, and we are already we are already under authority. We may think, well, I'm free. I can do whatever I like, and uh, I don't have any guru or I don't have any boss. I'm independent. But uh, you're always under authority, and if it's not uh, anyone else, then it can be your own mind also. And the mind will kick you around, <laughs> and it's not very funny to be uh, under the control of the mind, the mind and the senses. 
Let, let's take an example, uh, a person who smokes, a typical example. He's, he may say, well, I want to be free, I want to do what I like. I don't care what my parents say. They say I should not smoke. I, will, I want to smoke anyway, so it's not smoking. But then, actually, you become bound up. You become uh, completely, you, can, you become addicted. And then you realize, I don't want, I want to give it up. Then you realize, I'm under the control of the cigarettes. I may, I'm not free. So the point is, we should be uh, voluntarily uh, surrendering to Krishna. Krishna is speaking through different people, mainly our own Guru. And uh, even if he's not there, he's also speaking through other people, devotees. And uh, we should sincerely take shelter of uh, well, it's both Guru and Krishna. They inter it's interactive, in one sense. And when, when the Guru is not there, you cannot, maybe you cannot call him all the time <laughs> and ask him, well, sh what should I do now? Uh, should I put more salt in the kitchen? <laughs> these are, you know. But then, when you become a li little more advanced, that's a, maybe a stupid example, but when you become a little more advanced, then you start to also be able to, when you clean your heart, become able to perceive the super soul in the heart. And then uh, you can also ask Krishna. But we have to be careful. Uh, because sometimes, because there are more voices speaking to us, and we may mistake the different voices, this is, <laughs> this is what they ask. The first thing they ask people in mental hospitals, are you hearing voices? <laughs> There's the standard, I haven't been to, okay, I haven't been to a mental hospital, <laughs> but I heard this. They always ask this one question at least. And if you're hearing voices, then, then you have a problem. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyway. I don't want to get into to that, but um, we should learn to listen to the right voices. And the most safe way is, and especially for new fights, for beginners, we have to listen to our guru, who is there in front, right in front of us, and he's speaking. You cannot, if you cannot mistake when he says something, it's very clear. Yes. It was just uh, this morning also we heard about to become a human being then everybody has to develop 30 qualities <coughs> 30 qualities like uh, like tolerance, honesty, uh, gentleness, uh, gratefulness and all these kind of things and then there was a story with Hanuman uh, no, was it Hanuman and this squirrel, squirrel that uh, he wanted um, Lord Ram was building the bridge to Sri Lanka, and the monkeys they were throwing huge mountain rocks mm. to, you know. So they were thinking, you know, they are really doing something mm. great. And then this little squirrel, mm. he was taking, you know, rolling himself and taking some dust and mm. carrying to the best of his ability. And then this, uh, I think it was Hanuman. He wanted to. Get a, you know, get out of the way. But then Ram said that to me, you two are doing equally. Mm. So the point was in the story that it is the attitude also by which we do things. Mm. So, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, in our surrender, so if we can just take a check up on ourselves, also how we develop these qualities. Because sometimes we may not be able to do huge things, but if we can uh, help one person in that person's life, uh, change that person's life uh, by being kind and, you know, mm -hmm. while we are working on ourselves with these qualities, yeah. then we may also steadily make progress. Krishna says, I will, I will take you, I will just answer. 
Krishna also says, Papram Pushpam Param Toyam, you can just offer a small flower and a little water and some fruit, then I will accept it if you offer it with love. But then, of course, if you are a millionaire and you just offer a little flower, a little water, and a little fruit, and you keep the rest for yourself, then you're a cheater. <laughs> Krishna is not so stupid. He, <laughs> you will understand that. So if we have the capacity to do something, we should do it for Krishna. If we have nice boga to offer to the deities, we should not keep it. We should make, we should cook nicely for Krishna. And if we are very poor, we just have simple things to offer Krishna. He will also accept it. So, yes, I understand your point. Prabhu? Yeah, you mentioned about the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, saying that you should eat more vegetarian or eat less meat. But, I, but you said that you know, we were warming. I was in the Bhakti Ram Temple in Mumbai, Bombay. Mm. And these two do a lot of relate to science. And I think uh, it's for the first time so many people in the Western world really want to come to listen the, to the message of Bhagavad Gita. And because they finally are realizing, because of global warming, that they should maybe have changed their lifestyle. So don't you think it's a good idea to say, well, this is how. You know, Bhagavad Gita, and you know, Lord Krishna said we have to leave or, you know, why vegetarianism is good has another big way. Because I think people are really, really looking for another way of life, which is why there is a big attraction to, to this. So it's just something that I wanted to, like, there is an opportunity now to get more people to come to temple, to, you know, if there one more explanation, what would you say to that? We are definitely destroying the planet. That's a fact. How we are destroying it, there may be different opinions, but that's, there's no doubt that we are destroying the planet, exploiting uh, and exploiting the people on the planet also. Especially, I mean, we in the West, we are living a high, we have a high standard of living. And that standard is not natural. We are not meant to live in big houses like we do, for example. We are not meant to throw away, I don't know how much, and in Norway they throw away something like almost one third of all the food they cook, they throw it out. And of course, yeah, killing animals and uh, growing all kinds of necessary things, tea, coffee, uh, I don't know what and the whole meat production, it's a, so many things, we are destroying the planet. Pollution, industri industry, manufacturing cars, uh, sucking out the blood of the planet in the form of oil. This is not, Krishna didn't, it is not meant to be done. Uh, so, and we of course, Prabhupada also gave us all instructions how to live a simple lifestyle in harmony with nature, which this is a future project to be accomplished in ISKCON. Especially here in the West, we have not really uh, fulfilled that mission yet, simple living, high thinking. Or, yeah, that, that's a big subject. I myself uh, into trying to get into more uh, agriculture, simple living. Uh, we have some places like in Hungary where they are more and more self-sufficient with everything they eat and they don't use electricity. So, we, Prabhupada gave us the solution to all the problems in life. Everything is included in Krishna consciousness. But uh, we also have to understand that first we have to teach people to chant Hare Krishna. That's the most important thing to achieve. Because people, they need to not solve the problem just to 
become vegetarians or to, to, to be nice, to, to... We need to have what they call a paradigm shift or a change of heart. And that comes when you clean your heart by chanting the holy names of Krishna. This is our contribution to the world problems. And that will automatically, everything that comes after that will, you know, everything will be included. So, maybe you should stop now. Somebody is making signals. <laughs> we have Arctic. And talk more later. Hare Krishna.